Hello guys and welcome to this week's podcast and this week I'm going to be chatting all about school holidays and how we can plan for it, how it affects you and how to make it most importantly the least stressful time of the year instead of the most stressful time of the year. Now let's get over to the show. As the founder of the Landscaper Circle and the Limitless Landscapers podcast, I am here to help you get more money, time and freedom to make your life and business truly limitless. Through my experiences as the owner of a garden design and landscaping business and through tried and tested methods, if you want help with the marketing, managing and growing of your business, then you are in the right place. If you are a landscaper, garden designer, horticultural business or a supplier to the industry, be sure to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, and how the devil are you guys? How are you doing in this extreme heat we're having? How are you coping? Are you getting any work done? It's a hard one out there when we have extremes of weather in our industry. It can impact on the business quite considerably but I hope you are enjoying it nonetheless it sometimes feels a little bit better than rain so yeah hope you're all having a great week I thought I would do a podcast this week on school holidays because in nine days time my children and many others are off for what six weeks we've got a couple of inset days added on to that as well so it's even more fun But the difference this year, normally I am really, really stressed. I'm wondering how the hell I'm going to, one, entertain two children and two, run two businesses at the same time, because it is hard being a business owner and a parent. And regardless, if there's two of you, one of you, you know, if one of you stays at home while he goes and runs the business, it's difficult to try and manage all of that during a really intense period of time so six weeks is a long time we've all got holidays as well probably booked in between we're certainly got some some trips planned away which is great but I just wanted to share with you a few tips that I've done this year now I I tried this back in half term and it worked really really well so I thought why can't I apply what I've learned to work really well because I have to put my hands up and say it was the best half term I've ever had during the time of having kids and business really so I thought why can't I apply everything I learned and loved to this holiday and so I did and there was really two two elements of this one is the mindset around it because we can all feel quite guilty I'm I suffer with this a lot mum guilt is a very very real thing But essentially, you can feel like you're not spending enough time with your children. And then on the flip side, you're not doing anything in your business. So it's not doing anything. It's going stale. You're not getting anywhere. You're not achieving any of your goals. And on the other hand, you're saying, well, I'm not going out with the kids. Or what it used to be for me was I'm really stressed out because I'm trying to do both things at the same time. So I'm trying to be present with the children, taking them out to places, play dates, all of this. But I'm also on my phone. I'm also doing the business as and when needed and that just doesn't work it doesn't work either beating yourself up for being a bad parent or bad business owner or both so kind of you've got to get the mindset around it because ultimately your life is what you make of it so we are all given the greatest opportunity of being born and then we get to choose what we do with our life I know lots of people say oh but for me it's different ultimately your life is down to your choices And how you choose to spend your time, spend your money, spend your focus, what you focus on. And as you know, what you focus on grows. And I think we all need to be mindful of what do you see for your life? See, I never wanted to be a full-time stay-at-home mum. I've always wanted to run my own business. And I've always wanted to, I've, I've had certain goals and ambitions in my life that I strive to achieve. Now, it doesn't mean I don't enjoy being a mum. It just means that I like to have it all. And it used to be you couldn't, and now you can. But it does make it particularly difficult when it comes to school holidays because it's a longer period of time um, where you're trying to do both, sometimes badly. But I've managed to find a way. And it's really, really simple. 
but it was quite hard for me because it relies on one thing. It relies on you asking for help. Now, I've never in my entire life <clears throat> like asking for help. I don't ask for help. And then I get cross if people don't notice I need help. So it's something that I've worked on for many years. And it's something that I've begun to work on more and more as I've got older in that I just ask the question, ask for help. So essentially what I did is I got my planner out. I love a planner. If you haven't got one, you should definitely get a planner. I got my planner out and looked at the six weeks that we have. So nine days time, they're off for six whole weeks. And I sort of planned out the trips we're doing. So the, uh, we're going camping, we're going uh, city break, we've got a wedding thrown in, all of these things all planned in. And then around that, I thought, right, what could I realistically want to work? Because I don't want to work five days a week. And I, I appreciate some of you are still on the tools, so you might have to work more. But this is just a way around if you are looking to spend more time with the family, this is one way you can look at it. And if you are like me, the wife of a landscaper and you're running the business and you've also got children, definitely listen to what I'm going to say. So I basically mapped all of the important things out that we'd already planned and booked. And then I decided how many days I realistically wanted to work. So what would be a good balance? Now, for me, I feel that working three days a week on the business and in the business work, will work for me because I can work on other things at home in the evenings as required when the children are in bed. But predominantly, I want to have three days in the business where I can get stuff done and I can keep going forward with my goals. I think that's the most important thing. I don't want to stop. I don't want to have to put the brakes on my ideas, my goals, my dreams for six weeks to become a sole stay-at-home parent. So I've decided three days a week is, is suffice for me. It might not work for you. Maybe it's only two. Maybe you do want to work five and that's absolutely fine as well. No judgment is here. So I decided I needed three days a week and then I thought, oh, I don't really want to pay for clubs. Plus I do have a child that does not enjoy going to clubs unless it is a horse riding club, which costs an arm and a leg. So that's you know, she's going once during this holiday. And I thought to myself, well, who do I ask? Who can I ask for help? And I think that's the main thing you've got to ask yourself. Who can I ask for help? Decide how many days and then who could you ask to help you on those days? And I've, I've done a few things. So first of all, I contacted both sets of grandparents and asked, could they possibly give me a day a week? Both of them jumped at the chance to spend a day a week with their, you know, love of their lives, grandchildren. So I put them in. And I thought, right, that's two days a week done. Then I spoke to Mike and I said, you said you would help me out this holiday. Could you give me one day a week and come off the tools for a day a week to look after the children so I can work on the business? And he said, yep, absolutely feasible, can do. So essentially that is how I got the three days a week. But then I also had a couple of random so my friends, I'm looking after their children on, on a couple of days in the holiday. So they have offered to do the same for me, which has worked out really well because I didn't get any cover for the last week of July. But now I have, thanks to my friends. So again, there's lots of people out there willing to help. You just have to ask them and you have to plan it. And again, it comes down to what works for you. So if you don't want to be stressing this holiday and you don't want to feel like you're stuck and that you're going to come back in September and you're just going to not have felt that you've got any clearer any further forward in your business you haven't achieved what you're looking to achieve you know when we get back from school holidays it's September and then we've only got what September October November we've got four months before it's the end of 2022 and we're going into the following year and that can feel very pressurized as a business owner because at the beginning of this year you probably had some really big dreams and goals and you may or may not have achieved them at this point. So looking forward, looking at the summer holidays, that's either a period where you press stop and pause on those bigger dreams or you ask for help, manage your time and be able to take, it might not be huge steps, smaller, actionable steps, take the action to get, get towards the goals that you've set out so that by the time it comes to New Year's Eve 2022, you have hopefully achieved quite a considerable amount of the goals that you have planned out. Perhaps you haven't even got any goals set out. So what I would suggest is that you do 
go and set out some goals for the the last period of this year set out some goals on what you want to achieve in business and in your personal life as well anything that feels important to you really reconnect with your why like why the hell are you doing this if you're feeling like this is a, a massive slog a massive stress and you're falling out of love with the business which I hear so often not only from my husband but many others they feel like you know sometimes it can really get them down then really re- reconnect with your why. What is your purpose? Why are you doing this? What are your bigger goals and dreams? Why did you set up this business in the first place? Is there any way you can make changes and tweaks to it to enable it to more fully, you know, add to your life rather than so you can get to despise a business sometimes because it takes over your life and then you feel like you don't have any real life outside of the business. So, you know, start thinking on that level. If you aren't a TLC member, you can go join the wait list to become a TLC member when we reopen the doors. And there's no commitment to become a big TLC member. Let me just make that clear. It's just so you can find out when we open the doors first. But if you jump on that wait list, you'll get a free download and this will help you map out your goals from now until the end of the year. So it's actually a really good piece of work to do if you are feeling quite unclear if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're not sure where you're going, if you didn't actually plan any goals at the start of the year, this is a great way to start. You don't have to start at the beginning of the year. You can start any time as long as you make a decision that things are going to change, you have some goals, and you're going to take some actions to get to them. So go head over to the wait list. I'll put the link in the show notes and get your name on the list, get that download and start thinking about the next part of the year. Start planning, start goal setting and collecting with your why. Then go to your diary, planner, whatever it is that you work from and look at, can you have some time to work? If you are working on the tools, can you take a day to work on the business? Because it doesn't have to be just to look after the children. It could just be that you're currently in this, what I like to call like a hamster wheel of, well, rubbish, because you're on this hamster wheel constantly. You're going to work in the business you're on the tools you're out there doing the work and you're coming home and doing all the admin and the quotes is there a time you look at the the school holidays is there a time you can put one day aside half a day aside to work on stuff that will help your business to grow and develop not working in the business working on the business looking at income generating tasks that will bring in the money look at new ideas and opportunities that will enhance your business, grow your business, enable you to develop your business to the next level, whatever that might be. Can you set some time aside? And if you say, yes, that's what I'd love to do, then start asking for help. Think about who you can ask to help you. Could you sub your job out so it gives you a little bit of space to think? Could you give someone in your team more responsibility so it enables you to come off the tools? Could you reshuffle your staff about so it enables you to come off the tools for that half day, one day, two days, whatever it is for you? Could you employ somebody else? Could you get your partner to help and assist you? And if that's a point that you're thinking of, that's kind of where I specialize in partners and business. So you can always get in touch and I'll be happy to have a chat with you guys on how to, to do that and work forward and plan that if it's something new to you. Or could you just ask for help? Who can you ask for? for that would happily help you to achieve what you want to achieve so whether that's looking after the kids getting someone to look after the kids so you can work on the business whether that's getting someone to work in your business so you can work on your business not in it have a think I mean it's the perfect time to start contemplating this a lot of people tend to like almost it's like a wind down although we're really busy as landscapers and garden designers it's almost like the rest of the world takes all their holiday uh, over the next six weeks so it's not as full-on as I feel like September can be. So this is the perfect time to reassess. It's the perfect time to reassess your goals. Maybe, I mean, this is something I'm going to do this weekend and get the kids involved in it too, is create a new vision board, an update vision board for my life, my goals, my dreams, myself, my business, the future. And I'm going to get the kids involved because I believe that if we're developing, if we can get our kids and the next generation to start looking at their life as a positive possibility like the opportunities are endless nothing is impossible then I believe they're going to live a much easier better life than we ever did I don't know about you but growing up it was very much the only way to get anywhere is hard work hard graft 
you know, nothing comes for free, very, very closed mindset, very, you can't possibly do that. And, you know, it was very hard to break through that sort of mindset. All those things you've been told as a kid do carry over into adulthood. And I think, I suppose this is why people like us, entrepreneurs set up their own businesses and start to look at mindset as a, as a piece, a piece of work that you need to work on constantly to improve your life, your business, and to ultimately live the life that you dream of, whatever that is to you. It doesn't, you know, not everyone's dream is the same. Not everyone's why is the same. The most important thing is that you are thinking that way and you're thinking that the possibilities are endless. You are looking for opportunities. And most importantly, you're passing that inspiration and motivation, enthusiasm onto your children, grandchildren, and so on. So that's why I'm going to get them involved. It'll be quite hilarious to see what their vision boards turn out like. I'd love to know what they think their ultimate goal in life is at their ages as they are. I might do another podcast just on vision boards to share what we've done this weekend, possibly next week. And it'd be really good to hear from you guys. Do you have a vision board? Do you look at it regularly? Because this is the other thing. If you are going to create and set some goals, don't set your goals and then put it away never to be seen again until you dust it off at the end of the year and say, oh God, did I, did I not achieve this? No, if you're going to write out your goals, whether that's on like a vision board, and by the way, a vision board could be anything from just writing, pictures, whatever it works for you. It could be on the computer, off the computer, whatever you want. But the main, main thing with how it works is that you see it every single day and you reconnect with your ambition and your goals and that changes your mindset into thinking you can achieve it. And what small step could you take today to get to that big dream that's tomorrow, next year, next month, whatever. But essentially, you have to see it. So, I mean, so many times, I don't know about you, but did you create a business plan? I've created multiple business plans over the years. And then they just go into the filing cabinet, never to be seen again. It's quite depressing because a lot of work goes into it. But secondly, you're never looking at it. So the realistic you know, likelihood of you achieving the goals that you've set is quite low anyway, because you're not reminding yourself of it, you're not connecting with it. And when you connect with that ambition and that goal and something that makes you smile, your enthusiasm comes over and you're more likely to take the correct action because how you think and how you feel determines how you act. So if you're feeling crappy, depressed, alone, then you're probably not going to take some very focused action. If you're feeling like, wow, yeah, I could do that. That's the goal. That's where I'm aiming for. I'm super excited. I've got these opportunities coming in. Then <clears throat> guaranteed, you're probably going to take much better action uh, that day than you are if you're in the depressed state. And we all go up and down on the, this spectrum of excitement and depression and whatever. It's, it's all about how you deal with it and how you move forward with it. But that's something for another day. Essentially, I just wanted to share with you my win in managing the school holidays to suit me, to suit my family. And the main takeaway I want you to, to take from this episode is there is always someone out there willing to help. You just probably haven't asked. And secondly, the key is to make sure that you actually want to spend time on your business or with your children, with your family or out of the business working on your development plan, because if you don't really want to be doing it, you won't make it happen. If you do, you will. And for me, by taking some time to focus on the business, those three days a week that I'm going to get to work on the business means that the, the other four days in the week, I can be fully focused and fully present with my family doing all the exciting things we've got planned for the school holidays and just being with them as well. So I urge you to have a look at use this period of school holiday time to look at what you can do to make your life easier, better, less stressful, and also to start looking at ways to start regularly working on the business rather than in the business. So <clears throat> that's it from me today, today, this sunny, lovely Tuesday, actually, I'm recording this today. But if you need any help, TLC is here for you guys. We are the only membership created for landscapers, garden designers, and horticultural businesses. We are here to help you, you know, support you in your journey in business, help you with becoming the best business owner you can be. I know you're already the best landscape and garden designer you can be. And it's really just supporting you on that journey, building a community of like-minded people that can fully support you on that journey and making connections, 
getting some opportunities out there and developing your business so that you can live the life you've always dreamed. So if you need any help, get in touch. If you love this podcast, I'd love it if you could, if you're listening on a Spotify, rate it five stars. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave a review because it just means I can get into the ears of more people like you that might just resonate with some of what I'm saying. So to all you parents who are planning for the summer holidays, it doesn't have to be stressful. Just follow my plan. It'll all be good. See you later.